And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our very first speaker, Stephen Friedman. And he has been helping, for over 20 years, he's been helping aspiring professionals develop their management skills. He is currently on the faculty at Schulich and teaching all kinds of talented, young, and even not so young individuals about organizational behavior. And not so talented. And not so talented. <laughs> <laughs> and without much further ado, please welcome Stephen Friedman. Uh, so first off, I'm really glad that my outfit choice is almost wore the same thing. So, I'm pretty happy about that. How is everybody? Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about community, but I want to start by telling you a little bit about when I was a kid, um, which I'd like to say was like really, really recently. And, and, and damn it, I'm sticking to that. Um, so when I was a kid, and maybe some people can relate to this in the room, when I was a kid, I grew up in north of the city of Toronto. And when I was a kid, um, my parents would send us out, like, you know what, just after dinner, and even before dinner, like when we were like 10 years old, like even younger, we would go out to the neighborhood and play hide and go seek. Did anybody have this experience? Yeah. Hey, you have that kind of thing? And, and, and also, look, we would also have it so that, you know, at, if I came home from school before my mom, you know, I could go to my neighbor's house, we knew all the neighbors. And if the next door neighbor wasn't home, we could go across the street. That's not the way my world is where I live now. So where I live now, ironically in the same neighborhood, um, that doesn't happen. Now, I'm, I'm working hard to get to know my neighbors so that I can get free stuff from them. <laughs> but, uh, I think generally, um, certainly from the people that I talk to, this is a bygone kind of thing, right? This sort of, uh, I, I don't think, maybe some people can remember this. If you can, I'm sorry for aging you. Um, block parents, if you grew up in Ontario. Remember that? Block parents, remember that? So what I've noticed, and uh, my work is the world of work. So mostly I deal with people in the context of their work, in my, uh, in my practice and in my, uh, in my teaching. And one of the things that I find is that uh, as our physical communities are disappearing, um, we're moving more towards uh, other kinds of communities. And of course, one of them is social networking and the digital community, etc. But for a lot of working people, a big part of the modern community is work, workplace. Uh, for a lot of people, you're going to know more about the person in the cubicle next to you than you're going to know about your next one. You're going to see them more often. You're going to connect with them more frequently. So that sounds, I mean, that's pretty cool. Sure, you know, I mean, we, we could talk all sociologically about how, why we're not talking to our neighbors and all that kind of stuff. But I think the, the, the most interesting thing about it is that as this is happening, something else is happening too in the workplace. And that is that there's a greater need and desire for some of the subtle elements of social elements, the live social elements of community that perhaps we're missing uh, because everything's moving to work. And also, in the workplace, more and more people are desiring a connection between human beings. Now, uh, that ranges, that manifestation, that ranges you know, from a, you know, a whole bunch of different manifestations. Like, one of them is that um, younger workers, younger people, and I, by the way, younger, younger than, I'm going to say, under 40. Let's call younger under 40. Is that safe? Yeah. Under 40? We can say under 30, I look around the room. Um, younger people are saying, I'm more interested in a boss that has humility and that I can talk to and that I can look at, that I have their ear and I have access to, and who I can give feedback to and they can give feedback to me. People are looking for a more informal environment, but there's a problem. The problem is that the digital world is making uh, this even more difficult for us, and as a result of which we're losing skills. If you look at a newspaper from 20 years ago, by the way, a lot of people in the room, newspaper, it's a big paper thing. <laughs> Stuff written on it, just in case you guys haven't seen that before. Uh, if you look 20 years ago in the newspaper, you would not find a single job ad that says exceptional interpersonal skills. You wouldn't find them. But if you look today at job ads, you won't find a single one without that.
without asking for exceptional interpersonal skills. And I guess what I'm getting at is we're losing them. We're losing them and the, man, the outcome of this is you can see it all over the place that we're losing these skills. First, let's start with things like that I see in the workplace that I think smack of the kinds of lack of ability to develop relationships and, and really cling on to their importance for management and work and, and life. By the way, you spend like 70% of your waking life at work. Average Canadian spending 67% of their waking life at work. Um, so this is even more important. So one of the things that's happening is we're getting this weird shit like email bravery is what I call it. You guys know what email bravery is? It's kind of like road rage. If you're driving on the road in Toronto and somebody cuts you off, what are you going to do? You're going to roll down the window and go, fuck you! Right? Um, but what if somebody walks in front of you in the hallway at work? Are you going to do the same thing? You go, oh, you pass fuck you! Person walking in front of you? No. This is the same thing that's happening with email. We have a situation where people are sending emails to each other and like, like a raging angry one and then you see them like 20 minutes later in the hallway and you're like, oh my god, hi, it's so nice to see you. And you don't need to be a psychologist to know that there's something messed up about that. Now again, I'm going to appeal to the older folks in the crowd maybe, uh, the uh, more seasoned individuals in the crowd. And uh, do you guys remember a Mary Melody's cartoon, uh, like Looney Tunes, with the um, sheepdog and Wile E. Coyote? Do you know what I'm talking about? And Ralph the dog, right, Ralph the dog. And the guy would walk, they'd, they'd go to work, and they live in the same house. Their arms around, each other, hey, buddy. And they get to the tree where the punch clock is, and they punch the clock, and now they're arch enemies. It's as though they never walked from home to the workplace, right? And then when they're done work, and, and they're all bruised with, you know, the bluebirds flying around the heads and all the you know, broken limbs and stuff, and they punch the clock again, and they walk back home together as though they were never there. How was your day? There's something messed up about this, and this, I think, is what's happening with email. Now, not only that, not just email, all digital communications, because now, now we're moving away from email, where we have got lots of words that have their own problems. Now we're moving to text messages. We're losing punctuation. We're losing words. And now, and then after that, we, but the words are even disappearing. Now it's acronyms. Acronyms and pictures. Um, this is very concerning for me, and I'll tell you why. Because this, uh, the digital world, does not, um, in and of itself, alone, does not allow for the kind of rapport building that is crucial for management, and leadership, and functioning at work. Rapport is a beautiful, beautiful French word. It is, um, anybody speak French here? People speak French? So uh, maybe you can tell me what it means. What does it mean? I mean, there's not a, okay, never mind. What, really, you're up here, and now all of a sudden you're shy. Okay, that's all right. So people tell me there's no perfect translation. So rapport is kind of like somewhere between connection, relationship, vibe, gelling with somebody else. And it's like that, you know? And, what, and, and it reminds me of, you know, one of the things that we really need at work today uh, in the workplace is more of this sort of ease of connection with people. Why? So that we can get all those things I mentioned at the beginning. We can have bosses who we can give feedback to. Uh, we can solve problems with each other. And it reminds me of like when my son, now my son uh, is now 14, and he is an, an Aspie. If anyone knows what an Aspie is. Anyone know what an Aspie is? He's a kid with Asperger's on the autism spectrum. So he's a really wild kid. And he's like, he's like 14 now. But when he was like five years old, he came to me and he said, Dad, I want to be, be awesome. Which is really fucking cute, eh? Isn't that cute? That's really amazing. I want to be awesome. Um, can you help me? And I said, you know, I'm not there yet. Your mother will tell you. But, but I've given it a lot of thought, despite the fact that it's a strange thing to, to, to pontificate and think about. And I told him, I said, what, where, what, what do you mean? Like, where do you want to be awesome? He says, I want to be awesome everywhere. I want to be awesome at home. I want to be awesome with my friends. I want to be awesome one day when I get a job and go to work. I want to be awesome one day when I meet a woman. I want to be awesome to my sister. I want to be awesome. I want to be awesome. And of course, I'm like, that's awesome. Right? So I said to him, you know what? You want to be awesome? Especially at work, three things you need to be awesome. Three things. You can do these three things, you can be awesome anywhere. Okay, one, apology. 
If you can't say sorry to people, you won't be awesome. And I know that there's people in this room who have people in their lives who've never said sorry. I'm not going to embarrass anybody, right? But I know it's out there. I know who it is, too. Um, so apology, number one. Number two, forgiveness. Can you forgive people? Without justification, forgiveness is an individual action. It's not, in, in, not interactive. You just do it like that. And reconciliation. Making your goal when you're dealing with people to solve problems, to make up, to fix what's broken. The problem is that all those things increasingly are required for work, for the relationships that we need in the workplace today. But they're really, really hard. What can we do to make them easier? There's only one thing that makes those things easier, and that is a rapport. Right? When you think about it, when you have a connection with another person, conflicts are easy to solve. When you, give, you say the wrong thing to somebody you have a relationship with, you can backpedal. You guys know what backpedaling is? By the way, you can't backpedal here. There's no backpedaling here, right? Only here. Here you can backpedal. Here I can say, oh, you pissed me off, you in the black hat. You pissed me off. You know, I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Can you forgive me? I can do that face-to-face, -face, right? But I can't do that electronically, right? So these things are extremely hard to do, and the rapport is the kind of thing that's going to make them easier. So, why, why will this make things easier? Why? Well, let me tell you a little story about a guy. I do a lot of work um, in a whole bunch of industries. Uh, and I happen to do a lot of work, in, uh, and I don't know why, in uh, municipal government. And in municipal government, uh, I met a guy who uh, runs the fire and ambulance for all the city of Calgary. And uh, amazing employee, all of a sudden, one day, starts starts coming to late work, to, to work late. And no one, no one knows why. The boss sits and they talk about why it must be, must be, doesn't care about work anymore. And by the way, this guy is like six foot five and like sleeves, and he basically can't do this. You guys know what I'm talking about? Right? Big boy. So long and short of it is he's late for two weeks. They, they decide that it's because he doesn't care about the job anymore. So they go and confront him. After they confront him, um, they say, we know that you don't, you don't give a crap about the job anymore, and we got to give you some shit for this. He starts to cry. Why? Because he's 55 years old, worked for this boss for 16 years, but they never had the kind of rapport that enabled them to know that he lives alone with his, mo he lives with his mother at 55 years old. Not anything wrong with that, but he was embarrassed about it. Big, tough dude. And uh, he has to take his mom to chemotherapy every day, but he didn't want to tell everybody because then they'd know he lives alone with his mummy. So he didn't tell them. But he broke down and cried, ruined their relationship. The guy left. He'd been there for 16 years. Why? Because the boss didn't take the time to know who he is. Right? You see, digital media can be used. It's not binary. It's not we either use digital or we don't. We can use both. Why can't we, in addition to clicking on happy birthday, say happy birthday to the person in the hallway also? There's a reason why we make a distinction between Facebook friends and other friends. There's a reason why, right? So it can be a compliment. Not only that, we can use media and digital media to enhance our rapport. How? We got these amazing, today on, on LinkedIn they have it now too, we have these amazing digital fields on our uh, uh, phone books, you know? You can put in there, yeah, they have a daughter, they have two kids, they have a dog, they live in Vaughan, they do this, this is their hobby. That way you can follow up and you can ask things about people. Care and concern for the well-being of others. The kind that really sticks in people's heads doesn't come from digital media. It comes from connections. And you're going to see this need grow more and more. I'm not a neophyte. I like digital world. Both. We need both. The problem is thinking that one takes the place of the other. Thanks for listening. Stephen Friedman, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I was quickly writing down the recipe for how to be awesome, uh, but I missed the last one. Uh, I think it was listening, but uh, no. reconciliation. reconciliation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Are we okay? We're good? Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, all right. Is, uh, thank you again. Uh, that was excellent.